have an addictive personality, and uh, it, it started at age 15. Uh, sex and drugs at age 15. Anything from pot, coke, meth, acid, mushrooms, you name it. I did it at age 15. And, uh, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just the fact of being in a small town that had more uh, bars than churches. It was the fact that that's what the people that I hung around with did. So that's what I did. And, um, you know, I started getting in trouble with the law right away. Uh, too many alcohol convictions before I even graduated high school, so I couldn't get into the Navy. Um, first DUI at age 19, and, uh, and then treatment, and, you know, AA, and all these things. Through everything that I was doing, I was searching. And I know that some of you guys are sitting there right now, and you're just like, hurry up, get out of here, because some of you aren't going to succeed, and I'm sorry to say that, but some of you are, and I want you to know that there is hope for everybody here, because through the 15 years of using and abusing in and out of jail numerous times, can't count them on one hand, um, waking up in a ditch, uh, you know, waking up in hospitals from rolling vehicles, uh, waking up next to girls that I didn't know, you name it. It's it's a it's a messy life when you're out there trying to search for something. Well, it wasn't until uh, I'm just going to shorten this up. It wasn't until I I stopped drinking for like 22 months. I didn't stop using, snorting, or anything else, but I stopped drinking. That was the real killer for me. I had no control over it. And, uh, and I saw I, I saw myself sitting there, 22 months, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, I can I can handle this now. I can beat this thing. I should be able to go out there and have a, a social drink. Well, I never drank socially in my life. Well, I go out there, and within six months, I'm out of control. I crash my truck. There's no cops here, is there? <laughs> I crash my truck, hit and run into somebody. I run it into the ground, fleeing hide behind some houses, running through the yards, don't know where I am, and I'm laying in the ditch and I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing? What am I doing? I can't stand this life anymore. And, and it was there at that time when I wanted to kill myself again for the umpteenth time that uh, just as clear as I'm speaking to you, God spoke to me. God literally spoke to me audible voice as I'm laying in the ditch wanting to die. And he said, Carrie, I'm going to give you three choices right now. One, you can continue living the life you're living in and out of jail and treatment. Two, you can kill yourself but you know where that'll get you. Or three, you can move to Tennessee and get your life right with me. Well, at that point, I'm thinking, Number three sounds pretty good because I've tried this on my own time and time again, and I can't do it. I can't quit. I'm always searching for something to ease that pain, someone to take that pain away. But I was done looking. I couldn't find anything anymore. So I got on a bus with $100 in my pocket, carried what I could, and came to Tennessee. So the devil wasn't through messing with me. He caused that bus to break down in Kentucky, and I'm stranded in Kentucky, and I had to call my sister to come and get me two hours ago. Uh, it was it was a miserable it was a miserable deal, but I'm going to tell you, it was the best choice I ever made. And that was in July of 2001, and uh, and all it took was somebody to believe in me, my sister and her family, which just happens to be doing. They took me in for two and a half years. And just help me to, you know, get involved with the community, with the church, and and, uh, and and stop hanging around the kind of people that I was hanging around with. And that was the biggest thing, is I started to find hope because I found it 
you know, if I was actually focused and did something and helped somebody and made a difference in somebody else's life instead of worrying about the crap that I was going through, it started to ease the pressure a little bit. It started to help people. It started to help myself. It started to be able to sleep that night. And, um, you know, just to... It's, I'm not preaching it, you guys. I'm not, I'm not doing anything more than just saying that I want you to know that there's hope. There is hope on the other side. You don't have to leave here and, you know, do your time, do your treatment, do your jail sentence, go back out there and go back to that life. You don't have to. You have a choice. God's just waiting for you to call on His name. And uh, I'm just telling you, I'm glad I did. I've got two beautiful twin three-year-old girls right now, a great wife that has stood by me, and just the stories that I told her, she she didn't even know she could be with me after the stuff that I told her, but I said I had to lay it all out there for her, but she has loved me graciously, and uh, and, and God is merciful, and that's, that's all I got, I just hope that it helps somebody out there.